So guys, today we are going to be doing a review and rolling footage of the awesome, amazing Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore. And before we get into this awesome review, where I show you guys how to really beat this knife up, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Alaskan content like this. Apologize for the lighting in advance, but like I said, today we are going to be talking about the battle lore and the amazingness that is this knife. Hopefully you guys like some of the tabletop decorations here, uh, some of the ferro rods, fire pistons. The sheath in and of itself is pretty awesome and the pretty awesome Allegheny M38 Bushcraft, which I'm going to be bringing up in a little bit. But the main focus of this review, of course, is the battle lore. And this knife is, through my testing, has been a pretty amazing knife. Now, as the name kind of gives away, it is a bush lore design. They just call it the battle lore because they're battle horse. But this is based off of a just classic bush lore design with, this looks to be a little bit more kind of like a Ray Mears kind of styled bush lore and you can definitely tell that in its performance its performance is very competent like if you are a competent bush crafter this knife picking it up first in the ergonomics you'll immediately feel right at home but even better than that when you start to getting to use this knife for carving crafting doing intricate work making tri sticks uh, feathering sticks batoning just basically every single thing that a bush crafter routinely does this knife is very competent and very capable at doing and once again I was really actually quite surprised with this knife just how if you have the right skill how fast this knife will complement your skills that's I think what actually impressed me the most was I immediately started I just took this thing out and started doing feather sticks and just notching a few things and immediately it started just with ease that the knife felt very natural and very easy to accomplish things that were not necessarily hard for other knives to do but they just didn't feel as natural as this knife felt right at home honestly I was really impressed at that and I, I just have to say that that originally or immediately blew me away and then when I got to using the knife more and more and starting fires with it of course this knife does have a sharpened spine so it has a very very nice uh, ability or strikes ferro rods with ease and start you can start many fires very easily with this thing and I've done several one strike fires with this and like I said, that's primarily due to the fact of how sharp this is and how much sparks you can really scrape off so aside from that uh, this is t my first knife that is an 01 tool steel, but I've actually been really impressed. I really wasn't sure what to think of 01 tool steel, and while it definitely stains, as you guys can see, pretty easily, uh, definitely easier than something like A2, I've been very impressed by the carbon content of uh, 01 and how well it, that fares for it, and as well as how it keeps an edge. It keeps an edge for a very long time. This knife, I do strop every once in a while, but is still very, very sharp. Nowhere near dull. And uh, it keeps its edge for a very long time. And not only does it keep its edge for a very long time, it also is ground to be a really nice Scandinavian grind. I have another knife here. This is an A2, ironically, but this is the Allegheny M38. And this knife, while it's also pretty awesome, I think I like this, uh, the Battle Lore, just a little bit more as far as Scandi grinds go because this Scandi grind is just a little bit wider or has a little bit more width to it. And so what that entails when you actually start to do things like notching and <coughs> when you start to work with wood, um, it allows you to bite deeper and more seamlessly because one of the biggest things with the Scandinavian grind is while it likes to bite, usually they only bite to a certain depth because the the thickness of this spine tapers, or the thickness of this blade really, tapers up so fast. And so when you have a nice, easy, longer uh, Scandi grind like this, it allows you to bite into wood a lot better and a lot with less resistance really. So, 
overall, I've been very impressed by the O1's edge retention and to a certain degree, it's rust resistance. I did take this out on quite a few rainy days and I didn't let the rain stay on it, but uh, it definitely got wet and it didn't immediately rust up. This is definitely a more rust resistant steel than uh, uh, 1095 but overall it's still no like a2 or cpms 30v this will definitely rust up on you if you don't watch it and like i said you guys can kind of see well this knife doesn't have any rust in it it does have quite a few stained spots as is the tradition with a bush lore knife this is of course a drop point and this is probably the only thing that is arguable and of course this is more of a cap heart styled blade this m38 here and to a certain degree, I can really appreciate both of these styles. And at certain times, it's like I want the cap heart, and at certain times, I want the bush lore design. Ultimately, though, it goes back to what you're hoping to achieve with your knife. With a cap heart blade like this, it's significantly easier to make things like divots in wood because you have more of a width in your tip. But at the same time, with a cap heart style blade like this, it's also harder to start entry cuts when you're processing and game animals so a bush lore like this is significantly better for that but at the same time since you don't have quite as wide a tip you kind of give up the ability to make divots with ease and so it, it kind of is a give and take in addition this blade tends to get a little bit more pointed whereas you'll notice hopefully this bush lore is or bush lore this cap heart style is just a really fat and thick blade right into the tip and this tip really doesn't hurt to put weight on like hopefully you guys can see here i'm putting a little bit of weight obviously this would stab you if you tried but this would hurt significantly more to put your weight on and that's because there's ultimately less steel here at the tip so this would be better for penetrating and getting initial cuts going once again in things like processing game animals or just processing of natural materials this will probably be slightly better for doing those things but if you're into the more crafty elements this is going to be a superior this cap part is going to be a site a slightly superior design that's the basic blade design personally i have come to actually like the bush lore design a lot more than i initially did when i first got this knife and once again i've really been able to see how the performance of a bush lore works and once again I'm, I'm pretty impressed and i think the biggest thing i really wanted to test out with this bush lore and i'm going to roll in some footage here is is that i really wanted to see how strong the tip was and actually how resilient a one was because once again oftentimes when i I'm new to a steel I like to really test and string the steel out just to see what this steel is made of and so I really wasn't sure how uh, springy or how impact resistant O1 was but it was actually pretty impressive and so basically what I did was I would uh, take a saw and saw two pieces or saw one piece uh, two different notches or saw cuts into one piece of wood and then take this knife drive it into the piece of wood and just pry vigorously to pop that piece of wood out and I actually did that in that video so that I could make notches saddle notches basically to hold wood but I also did it so that I could test the tip strength and the tip strength of a bush lower and the overall uh, shock resistance of O1. And I was really impressed by it. And I have to say, um, high five to uh, Battle Horse Knives for making a knife that is very tough. I was very impressed by that. Not saying I necessarily go out into the woods seeking to destroy knives, but occasionally I'm just very curious of how much a knife will really take and can I actually get it to break. And this one did not break, so I'm really impressed. On to ergonomics, like I said in kind of the intro, the ergonomics are very squared away. This, these handles are not only, in my opinion, really beautiful because they kind of have a natural canvas, kind of greenish to natural tinged canvas micarta, but they also have a green uh, micarta uh, 
what is this inlay or kind of layer or liner I should say <laughs> there we go but they have a tan liner and I think that overall this handle just looks really great so not only from a looks perspective does it look awesome but it also feels awesome the handle leaves nothing to be really desired it fills up the hand very well there isn't a gigantic amount of room for me but if you had larger hands it would still definitely work this this handle is definitely very comfortable. It's entirely, uh, it's entirely, entirely sweeping rounded off portions to it. So unlike something like this Allegheny M38 where it's like flat, 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 and then right at the edge it curls, which does feel comfortable to a degree. I do like this and it naturally feels, this naturally feels more hand filling because it's kind of overall swept. So with this, like I said, it's flat, 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 then it kind of tapers off and curls and then gets <coughs> rounded but with this it's entirely rounded so I do really like that and the ergonomics just overall feel really great There's overall size and durability I found the overall size to be at first I thought actually a little bit too large for me and I didn't actually like the size in the absolute beginning but once again as I started to use this knife in the field I started to really appreciate the fact that it was just a little bit larger generally my go-to size for bushcrafting knives is about this Allegheny M38 so you guys can see it's not substantially larger than the M38 it's probably about a good inch to three quarters of an inch larger but it's just that little bit larger that I was not sure that I would really end up liking but once again putting it into the field I actually really enjoyed that so to overall durability, it's been extremely durable. I have purposely used or maybe even misused this knife just to kind of test Battle Horse and O1 and this knife. I just was really curious to see what kind of levels, because this is also my first Battle Horse, that I was just curious to see what kind of levels of quality are coming out of this uh, factory. And I even impressed the actual company by doing those really hard tests and really seeking to try to destroy this knife and through all that all that destruction testing I've actually found that this knife to be a really awesome knife at an upper end bushcrafting knife it is also it does at least deliver the the quality and durability that you're expecting for that price point so I will give it that for sure <sighs> over to the sheath because I do want to hit it. I do like it for the most part. Uh, one of the things I like the most, and this is, I believe, an option you have to get on the side, but is the custom ferro rod. And I really like this ferro rod, if I can get this off here. <laughs> I really do like this ferro rod. It's quite a long rod and very thick. It's equal in thickness to this ferro rod. This is a Light My Fire Army for anyone wondering. But you guys can see here that starting at the actual base of each ferro rod, this one's a good inch longer. And so I always appreciate a longer ferro rod and it's very thick, it throws good sparks. You guys can see here, I've used it quite a bit with this knife and it works really, really well. I also like the kind of neat feature that this ferro rod is custom to this knife and the fact that they both have the same handle material and color and so I thought that was pretty cool and a really nice kind of personal touch to complement the knife with this whole package and I would definitely recommend if you are considering uh, getting their ferro rod with the knife I would definitely say go for I would definitely say go for it. The only thing I kind of dislike is the ferro rod loop is a little bit big, so you guys can see that the retention on this is not the best. I mean, it won't absolutely fall out of this, but uh, especially when I first got it, it was still a little loose, or it was a little bit more tight than this, but it's loosened up, of course, as the ferro rod has sat in here longer. And so all I did was I just took some, hopefully you guys can see this, it's some black shock cord, and that's why I keep the black shock cord on there. It can be a little bit hard to put on because this ferro rod's so long. 
So it can be a little bit hard to put on there because the ferro rod's really long, but I did put a little bit of shock cord on there just so that it would keep the ferro rod on there and I wouldn't have to worry about losing such an awesome ferro rod. Other than that, the sheath is very basic. There's really not much to talk about. It's a good high quality leather sheath. The sheath is made of pretty thick leather. I really don't have any complaints about it. It does bury the knife pretty deep as you can see and the retention is definitely on the upper end of a leather sheath but it still is a leather sheath so it's not like Kydex retention but still not bad and it's not going to accidentally dump your knife. You guys can see here under pretty good tension that doesn't even budge so and this is not a lightweight knife, so that's pretty impressive. The retention is pretty good, but overall, it's just a leather sheath. Not too much to talk about, as it's pretty much like all other leather sheaths. So, not something like this Kydex sheath that comes with this Bushcrafter. And I generally do prefer things like Kydex sheaths, but at the same time, I can appreciate leather. That's basically my thoughts on the awesome Battle Lore by Battle Horse Knives. I really like this knife. I will say I had some trepidations when immediately like unboxing it and uh, just looking at the knife. It immediately felt great in the hands, but I was unsure it was a little bit large and not quite a style of bush crafting knife that I'm used to but I am happy to say that this knife is actually very impressive and as far as bat or bush lore knives bush lore patterned knives go uh, they're actually all pretty expensive aside from condors bush lores uh, most bush lores are very expensive knives even more expensive than this one so if you are looking for a really great version of a bush lore and you want a serious bush crafting belt knife that will be a great companion and great service to you i would definitely recommend checking out the battle horse battle lore or battle horse knives battle lore because it is a really great knife anyways guys that's all for now god bless and i'm out